let's get up to Danny Valdivia for the introduction of the fighter. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Boxing Incorporated in association with Holden Productions and Budweiser, the undisputed, undefeated king of beers, present the main event of the evening, heavyweights, 10 rounds. Tonight's bouts are sanctioned by the Association of Boxing Commissions, Missouri Office of Athletics, Jim Hall, President. Judging at ringside, Jim Huey, L.P. Lane, Jeff Sefton. The third man in the ring, Kevin Champion. In the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim, at an even 248 pounds, from Kansas City, Missouri, undefeated in 13 professional bouts, eight wins by knockout, Brian Bam Bam Scott. And across the ring in the blue corner, wearing red trunks with black stars, at 224 pounds, from Jay, Oklahoma, with 39 wins, two losses, 34 big wins by knockout, the former WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Tommy the Duke Morrison. Come on in here. Come on up here, Tommy. All right, I've already given you guys your instructions in the dressing rooms. I expect a good, clean fight. I want you to keep your punches up and obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Good luck to both of you. Go back to your corners. So here's a look at Brian Scott, undefeated, but has not fought anywhere near the caliber of opponent that Tommy Morrison has fought. In fact, he won one fight without landing a punch. In fact, he knocked a man out without landing a punch. That was Alan Jamerson in his third fight. In the first round, about 30 seconds into the fight, Jamerson threw a wild right hand and threw his shoulder out and couldn't continue. <laughs> That's a way to win a fight, isn't yeah. it? Scott believes that even in this small ring, he can box effectively against Tommy Morrison. You can see that Morrison's in much better condition than when you last saw him against Tui Tuia. He was 238 pounds. Although Scott believes he's in the best shape of his life, but, and he won't find too many long no. as we said he started out. He literally, he's, he has lost Michael Carvajal. He's lost 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Morrison whacked him on the break there, and that Adam started, or Scott, excuse me, started, uh, started exchanging with him. Probably exactly what Tommy Morrison wants. There's nowhere to go in this ring, so for boxing, this, 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 this ring is a disaster if you want to move. That's what Scott wants to do. Man, these two guys really fill it up. 16 and a half feet across the inside of the ring can be as big as 20 feet. has ever questioned Tommy Morrison's power. He's a very good puncher, especially with the left hook. And it's the hand speed and the, the speed of the punches. And as you well know, you did many, many Mike Tyson's uh, bouts. It was the speed with which he punched that made him even more powerful. Scott, Scott believes from his sparring with Morrison that he can land some punches again. Well, that's what I was going to say. At his best, Mike Tyson was also an outstanding defensive fighter. Yes. It's an area, of course, that Morrison wants to work on. Oh, there's a blood. Yeah, big cut left eye. Uh, Scott. I wonder if that came from a clash of heads. They've been banging heads in there. Yes, it well could have. The one thing we didn't think about here early in this bout. Here we go. Work yourself right. Still can't see the severity of that cut. We said these two really fill up the ring. It's hard to see around them. Looks like it's above the left eye of Scott. Scott is throwing his jab out, but not with enough uh, power to keep Morrison off him. And that's what Morrison wants to do, let those combinations flow more than he has in recent fights. Look at jabbing your win. Oh, there's Scott using his hand now. End of the first round, we will get into the corner of Brian Scott here. They're going to have some work to do. 
at it. Now they're going to stop the fight. Shit. I'll let you work on it. Okay. I'll let you work on it. I'm not going to stop it yet. I'll let you work on it. Okay. You know what? That, that's deep. It's interesting. That's, that's a doctor that's in there. I don't I'll believe that's a cut man. Give it a chance. You did a fix me back on fight. Either that or a very well dressed okay. cut man. Oh, still. Keep spinning. You're okay. Ryan, jab and grab, baby, all day long, okay? Don't get on the ropes. You're doing great. Go. Cool. You're doing great, dude. You're doing great. Where's the mouthpiece? Ryan, all right, baby. I got it. Okay. You're doing great. Hey, jab and grab. You're doing beautiful, man. You're Here's where Tommy Morrison hey. nailed him with a shot. This may have been what caused the cut. We said possibly it was a... Oh, yeah, I'll bet you it was, because an uppercut, when you throw it like that, will create a cut, plus some right hands. So let's give Tommy Morrison credit. I think that was what caused it, not a clash of heads. Interesting, though, that I really don't believe that that is a cut man in the corner there. And, you know, that's a highly specialized area of boxing. He was ready to stop the fight. And I, I don't think, I believe I've ever heard a cut man say stop it. I think that was his manager that was, was suggesting it. Might have been. No, not, I mean, he was saying it's an off, it's an awfully deep cut. There's uh, Tommy Morrison with the edge in uh, round one, obviously. Interesting strategy that they told uh, Brian Scott. A jab and grab. <laughs> and that is about what they want to do, especially in these early rounds. They did a good job on the cut. See all the tattoos on the body of Scott. He said he got all those in a two-week period when he was 16 years old. He said, I was a little bit wild. <laughs> also finished second to a switchblade. He carries a six-inch scar on his stomach. Nice uppercut. Yes. Let me tell you something about the way Morrison's attacking here. He's attacking the way he did against Ben, leaving himself wide open and getting nailed with shots. Hurt. He wobbled him with the left. Very bad technique by Tommy Morrison. Very bad. And it's the kind of thing they are going to have to fix. And another uppercut, Scott Tumbles. And they throw the towel and it's over. States throwing the towel and wouldn't stop the fight, but no commission here in Oklahoma, as we said, and it's probably well stopped to tell you the truth. Well, I think once they do that, you can disqualify the man, and uh, they decided to stop it. It would have been stopped, I think, in any case. I'll tell you what, as we look at Tommy Morrison, let me tell you something. He absorbed some pretty solid right hands. He attacked exactly the way he did when he got Michael Bent on the ropes. And I believe, and I'll ask him afterwards, and he's a pretty honest guy, I think Brian Scott got his attention with, with some of those shots. Here's Tommy Morrison attacking, getting nailed. And there's a nice uppercut. And I believe somewhere mixed in at a different time was a right hand. But the, this is what erases those kind of mistakes, the power that Tommy Morrison has. Nice combo by him, and that sends Brian Scott down. When you punch that hard, you're going to knock these kind of people down. So Tommy Morrison is a winner once again. And I'm sure Tommy Burkett will agree there's still a little work to do. Let's get up to the center of the ring, make it official. The winner by a knockout in one minute, 37 seconds of round number two, Tommy the Duke Morrison. So Tommy Morrison is a winner, and he wins for the 40th time in his 42-fight career and scores his 35th knockout along the way. We'll be back to talk with him. In Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tommy Morrison is a winner in our main event. Let's get up to the center of the ring right now. Al Bernstein with Tommy well, Morrison. thank you, Barry. I'm here with Tommy Morrison, who has notched yet another victory. Tommy, this, again, an intriguing fight in the sense that early in the bout, uh, he appeared to land a few counter shots, but once you got him on the ropes, you were able to knock him out. I think once we started putting pressure on him, I felt him starting to kind of loose up a little bit. I went inside and was able to make him miss a lot, uh, which I think is a good indication that we've been uh, working on that, plus the weights down, the hand speed, I think it was just a little bit too much for him to handle. You did throw some combinations, especially combinations to the body and the head. Was that the way you wanted it? 
Well, what we try to do is always go to the head, body, and you know, high, low, high. That usually uh, creates openings. And when you enter with the more experienced fighters, you know, the, the, the big shots don't always land. You got to make your own openings, and that's what we're trying to do. Well, let's take a look at the knockdown, and you can comment for for on us. The inside uh, here. I was trying to come over and under and try to work the body as well. Then when I see him duck his hands, the head was apart, was able to come with a uh, kind of a Tyson 6-4 and then come back with a hook. And I pretty much uh, I took it out of him, I think. Now, there's an indication of what you were talking about, the idea of getting back to throwing the kind of combinations. And I'm going to uh, make an ironic point. Probably the best combinations you ever threw were in the Ray Mercer fight, even in a fight you lost. Um, that's the kind of hand speed you want to get back to. That's what we want to do. Uh, you know, the thing we didn't do in the Mercer fight that we feel like we're doing now is we're trying to relax in the ring and get ourselves into the later round, you know, in the gym and both uh, in the fights as well. And I think that will uh, help us aid us in our preparation for uh, another shot at the title somewhere probably uh, by the end of the year. But the only thing in this spot that I would look at as kind of a negative, and let's take a look at it. When you had him on the road, it seemed like you were squaring up to him a little bit like you did against Michael Benton. Here's, even though you're yeah. making a miss here, did you feel that? I, felt, I did, and that's why I started moving. With the bent fight, uh, I was right there. I was squared up. I was throwing powerful punches, but I stayed in the middle. One thing that we felt that I felt that we did is uh, we made the guy miss a little bit. We're not staying in the middle. We're wobbing, weaving, giving the guy different looks, attacking at different angles. I think it set up uh, the knockout force later in the round. Now, see right there, you started to move your head, and that did come, right. as you said, after you had been standing there. Right. Let's talk about some of the other things that are that are going on with you, because people are interested. You've, uh, you've gotten your act together to a great extent. I mean, you've been very public about the fact that it's been difficult for you to get to the point where you can have the proper discipline to be a guy that's going to be a heavyweight champion. What's turned it around for you? Well, one thing that's it's very hard to do as a young athlete, you know, I always, always train extremely hard when I'm in the gym. It's out of the gym where I don't have the, uh, the most discipline in the world. I'm a country boy living in the city. There's always those temptations. There's always something to do. But I realize I have the problem, and I'm moving myself out of the city back home to Oklahoma where there's nothing to do but build sandcastles. So <laughs> that's what we're looking to do. And I think uh, I've been around my family. I have a four-year-old son that needs my... Uh, needs my attention at this point. I think uh, that's where I need to focus my uh, personal life. What's next for you in the boxing ring, do you think? Well, at this point, uh, you know, we're looking uh, to fight late, you know, in uh, the last part of April, possibly the 21st. Uh, still hasn't been pounded out yet, but uh, we're looking to stay busy and continue to climb. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity also to thank uh, God for helping me get my personal life together. And now that I have, it seems to be carrying over into my professional life as well. So. It usually does. Congratulations. Thank you very way. much. Appreciate all right, Tommy Morrison, a man who's getting all of his house in order. He helps in the boxing ring and outside it as well. We'll be back for more here on Top Rank Boxing. Don't you dare go anywhere.